So in this two-page document, we're going to go back to page one, where here we can tangibly then do something. Page two is rather intangible until you get to it. But let's say we engaged in Twitter, we engaged in Google+, we, we did the newsletter. Okay, how do we know it's working? That's what page one is, setting up these webmaster tools to track conversions, to see impressions. You need some setup. We need to basically tell the search engines, here's my website track it and give me the data and then I'll be able to see I had a lot of traffic on Tuesday guess what that's the day that I that's the day that I tweeted something I'm getting a lot of traffic from Yelp good thing that I have my Yelp profile set up properly it's not working my efforts on Instagram okay so that means I can decide to try harder on Instagram or save my effort and put it off to Twitter I won't know that data until I set this up we're going to set it up for both of these, for Google and Bing. We're going to set up Bing Web Webmaster Tools, Google Search Console, also known as Google Webmaster Tools, and Google Analytics. So before this class, how many of you have heard of Google Analytics? A few people, most people, okay. How many of you have heard of Google Webmaster Tools, also known as Google Search Console, before this class? Less people. And how many of you have heard of Bing Webmaster Tools before this class? Less people. So we're going to set up all three of them. If you've already got them set up, uh, maybe follow along and you'll learn something new. But what we're going to do first is Bing. We're going to set up the Bing Webmaster Tools first. And when we set one up, the others will be set up, will be able to set up pretty easy, pretty much the same. So we'll work with Bing first. I have a link there. If you follow that link, that goes over to Bing's help system, their webmaster tools help. This would be the manual. This will tell you what is it, what is it about, all of these sections, how to use it, what kind of content, uh, what kind of malware do we have, what about content on the left side. So again, here's all of the answers from Bing. Do this, don't do that, best practice is this, best practice is that, Right there, four or four page best practices. We're not going to read this together. You're going to look at it at some point, maybe, you know, load it up on your tablet and curl up by the fireplace and then with a glass of wine and read this and then get really educated about the Google, the Bing Webmaster Tools. We're not going to go into it uh, ourselves because I'm taking a lot of the content from here and synthesizing it along with the book, the, the, the recommended book from the syllabus. Uh, so I'm. Um, we're not going to be going into a lot of detail with this. What we are going to do, if I go back to the PDF, what we will need to do is we will need to add and verify our site. We will need to talk about a site map, add additional links about our site, and how we actually do it is here on the PDF, that address. You want to memorize it, but if not, it's in my handout here. Bing.com slash toolbox is the way to go back directly to set this up and to see our results. So if you don't have a website, you can still create the accounts to some point, but you won't get much out of it because there's no website for Bing or Google to tell you about. So let's uh, see how well we can go. This can be done for WordPress. This can be done for Dreamweaver, for Weebly, Wix, Squarespace, Blogger, WordPress.com, everything. Let's try this. Either click the link, bing.com slash toolbox, or in the web browser, type bing.com slash toolbox. And then we're going to either log in or create an account. How many of you currently have a Hotmail email account? Or an Outlook email account? If you have a Microsoft email account, we'll be able to set this up pretty quickly. If you don't, we'll be able to create an account for free. So I won't be able to show that those steps exactly to create an account. So either you're going to sign in or sign up. I'm going to give you like two minutes to do that, and then after we log in, I'll show you the rest. But here, either click sign in or sign up. And notice Bing is going to give you, if this is your first time setting it up, it's going to give you a hundred dollars credit 
for that PPC, the pay-per-click. Remember I said we're going to talk about all of the paid I mean, we're going to talk about all the free stuff, but there's also paid stuff that we can engage in, such as putting ads. You know, Google AdWords is the famous one, but Bing has their own version. And Bing is going to give you $100 to use the network. <clears throat> so take a moment to either sign in or sign up, and then we will proceed. If you do sign up, it'll ask you a bunch of questions, fill those in pretty honestly and you're not going to get calls, you're not going to get spam messages from them, it will be legitimate. So take a moment to sign in if, or sign up if you're having any trouble, let me know and then we'll, we'll go on in just a moment. You don't have to do anything except sign in. We're going to do it together. <clears throat> Any of those questions seen here, let me know and I'll help you with it. But let's take a moment to sign up or sign in. Is anyone having any trouble? Did everyone manage to sign in or sign up? So the point of this is that 
Bing, and then when we do this for Google, we'll be able to track information about your website. I have this testing account that is new. There's nothing here, basically, with what you get. But eventually, when we set this up and we let it run for a while, like when we come back next week, hopefully there will be data here to look at. If there isn't, they'll show you example data. But eventually, our site will be listed here. That means Bing will know about it. Because the search engines are trying to browse the whole internet and trying to find websites. And eventually, they'll get to yours. But there's lots and lots and lots of websites to get to, so it might not find yours in time. So if we submit our website directly to the search engines, that's very helpful. Then it'll tell us eventually, OK, do we have any messages related to our site? The search engines will check our sites and see, is there a virus on your site? Is there something broken about the server? So we'll see messages. We'll see clicks from search and appeared in search. That's impressions and conversions. Appeared in search would be impressions. My site appeared a thousand times on Bing this month. And out of it, I got 700 clicks. So that's my CTR, click-through ratio, click-through rate. It got viewed a certain amount of times. There were conversions. There were clicks. And then it'll say other info such as pages crawled, pages indexed. The search engines have, these, have this software. They call them spiders. These spiders that go on your website and crawl around and go to your home page and click a link and go to your about page and analyze that and click a link there to your contact and analyze that. They're crawling your site. So the search engine is going to say, we crawled these number of pages on your site. We found these number of pages. And the pages could be added to the index, the database that Bing knows about your site. So it's going to scan your site and it's going to save content of your site to the search engine, which we want. We want this. When someone searches these keywords, the spider had found those keywords on your site, and therefore it could get you traffic to your site. Of course, it's very empty right now. I haven't set it up yet. But the longer you set it up, the better, because then you can change your, your time scale here. Show me my traffic in the last seven days, 30 days, three months, six months, or a custom time. Show, show me my data in one year, in five years, or however long I've got it set up. It's not going to, unfortunately, show you the data that's before you set it up. It's going to show you data as we proceed. So let's set up our site here. We have the button right in the middle about add your site, or a box there to add your site. Both are the same. I'm going to click the Add Your Site button here. Yes? If, you, if we're doing this um, now and you're putting your site in there, although you're building it, it's going to show up in Bing? It could, yes. So you have to decide then. Maybe do it later when your yeah. site is more complete. Because if now you, it, Bing will know about it, and conceivably people could find it when it's incomplete. So you oh. might want to hold off. Mine is asking to verify ownership. That's what I'm about to talk about. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to click Add Your Site, and then it'll tell me right here. You might have started it before, and it's still waiting for verification, so we'll get to that one moment. But I clicked Add, and it's saying, putting your address, the URL of your site required. You can add a site map. Right now it's optional. And you can set this traffic, which is optional. What this is saying is it's going to need your website. So let's say I've got http victors bakery san diego.com san diego.biz let's say i'm putting my address you're putting your address and again if your site is still under construction you don't want the search engines really to know about it yet you don't want to do this yet adding a site map this is related to this is like a map and this is related to the search engines being able to find everything on your site. So in the real world, oftentimes there's a map, let's say, at the mall. You go to the mall, and then there's a map that says, you are here, and all of the stores are listed on the map. And so that's valuable because let's say you're trying to find a particular store. You would go to the mall map, 
find the store and go to the store. And that's similar here for, for Bing and Google. You submit them, you submit to them a, uh, a map, a document that is a list of all of your links. And then Bing and Google can then fully understand your site, and when someone searches, find your site. The problem is that this sitemap is not, is not really just like a basic uh, list of links. It's not something that I would go into Word and write a list of links. It's a special kind of document. Uh, notice what my notes say. Uh, sitemap, using WordPress plugin, like WordPress SEO by Yoast, will do the hard work for you. If you'd like to create your own, refer to this site. This is a very technical process, however, and it's best left up to a plugin. So it's not just a list of the, of the links on your site. It has to be in a special coded format. So I, that have been doing this for 15 years, I wouldn't try to make my own sitemap. It's complicated. It's annoying for people. What you would want is some software, such as the WordPress SEO plugin by Yoast. Or if you've got Weebly or Wix or Squarespace or whatever, there must be some way with your software to create a sitemap. You need to research it in your, in your software, how to make a sitemap. Once you've got a sitemap, you can add the link to your sitemap here. I don't know my sitemap. I don't know if I've got a sitemap, so I can skip it for the moment. But later on, I would want to return, and I would say, yeah, my sitemap is you know, victor.com slash sitemap.xml. It's usually this XML code format. It's complicated. So really, you want to figure out the plugin or the software that makes your sitemap. I don't have one yet, so I won't fill anything in. And Bing and Google are going to be checking your site on a regular basis to see if anything is new, anything updated, and so forth. Therefore, traffic is going to go to your website from the search engines. And therefore, that traffic could be slowing down your site, possibly. So here we're, Bing is asking, and, and Google is going to ask something similar, what time of day do you get the most traffic to your site? During those times, we will decrease our traffic to your site. We won't slow down your site while you're getting most of your traffic. Now, it's rather neg negligible, the traffic that the search engines send. But if it is a problem, we can set it. I don't know what are the most popular times of my site. That's why I'm setting all of this up. So most likely, you will just set it to the default, and then eventually you'll have your answer that most of my traffic comes during working hours. So I would come back and tell Bing, don't browse my site between 9 and 5. Don't slow down my site at that time. I don't know that, so I won't change it. And the only thing that I've done here is added my website. Click Add. And then now, we're not, now we need to do verification. Because in, in the real world, if you asked me, where do you live? If you're asking me, where do I live? I'm going to say, oh, I live on that uh, mansion in La Jolla. Now, you may or, or may or may not believe me until I go unlock the door of my mansion and prove it. That is, until I have my butler unlock the door to my mansion. I have to verify that I live there. Well, for your website, it's it's the same thing. We've told it, this is my website, but now I have to verify it. Because what's to stop your competitor from claiming your website on Google or Bing to see your traffic? This is what's to stop them. Verification. Because your competitor might say, yeah, that, that's my site. Yeah, that's my site. But they're not going to be able to prove it until they, act, they, they do either option one, two, or three. So you have to do one of these options, and I'll, I'll explain how in a moment. But in Bing, we have three ways to do it. I would recommend don't even bother with option three. This one's technical and complicated. I wouldn't even bother with it. Like I said, I've been doing it 15 years. Don't even worry about option three. 
you have to do either option one or two. Let me tell you an overview of what you would need to do and then specifics. Option one in general is download this file. You're going to get a file with your own unique code. You're going to download it. And somehow you're going to upload it to your website. So that's why I said get your login information. You might upload it via file manager in GoDaddy. You might upload it with some software, FTP software, like Cyberduck or Transmission or FileZilla, WinSCP. There's lots of software to upload to your website. It's called FTP, FTPing to your website. Somehow you have to upload this file to your website. And Bing, when you click the Verify button below, will go to your website and look for the file in sitehealth.xml with your code. Your competitor has no way to log into your website to do that. That's how you verify your site. Yes? I'll see you in just a moment. Let me finish my thought here. Um, option two is another way to do it. Remember, either or. Option two is it's saying copy this line of code and paste it into your website. You're going to go to edit your website somehow. You know, you're going to log into your WordPress dashboard. You're going to log into your Squarespace control panel or something. You're going to go somewhere to your site and add this line of code to the head section of your site with your own unique code. I would then re I would save that file on my site, save that page return to Bing and click Verify. One of those methods should work. Now, the problem with teaching this is that I can only go this far, because some people have WordPress, some people have Squarespace, some people have nothing, and, that, and, and, and so forth. So I can lead us this far. We're going to take, uh, take a moment. If you think you can do one of these two, try it. If you need help, we'll do help right now. You raise your hand, first come, first serve. And if you think you can do one of these, try to do it with my help if you'd like. So let's pause maybe like five minutes or so to see if we can do this. If not, that's okay. We'll proceed. But you do need to do this to verify with Bing. And we'll, do a ver we'll do a version of it with Google in a few minutes. Thank you. 
Some kind of website on the company that can be accessible to people or people who do not want to be abstract and such.
One word. So, two words more, or just two words? Just to confirm that we have this option. Um, sometimes, if it will be two words, available two words, sometimes we have an option right here to do. To do option two. And we see one word, so it could be a possibility. It could be from here, number three. It could be from 15, and the other one doesn't have it. So, what we could then do is we would add a plugin. We can talk about this plugin in more detail later, but we're going to add. Let's search Y bone AST. Let's boost um, space S N M. Enter. Okay, this little plugin, this extra bit of software will just be useless here. And this will give us a lot of good options, which we'll talk about in class. But the one I want to do right now is the ability to verify. So now we've got a brand new section here, I guess. On the site. Hmm. And webmaster tools. So now there's a box here which will be adding thing verification and approval verification. If we go back here, that's going to be option two. That gray line of code there, select it and copy it. Yep. Both lines. To the, to the Bing window. We can verify. There we go. The page you get to the big red X. But now, later when we do Google, we can do the same thing. We can do general. And again, under SEO, general webmaster tools, we can do Google verification a little later. But for the moment, Thank you. And the last 
anything else? All right, so if I helped you out, it wasn't terribly complicated. It's just that everyone's system's a little bit different. And here, either option one or two. Don't worry about three. It's way too complicated. And so um, the point of that is it should have taken you back to Bing, and you should see, you know, mine, mine is not going to look the same because I, I don't have a real site here, but yours is going to take you to look like a screen that that has some stats, which is probably empty because the site is brand new. When we come back next week, hopefully we'll log in again, and hopefully we'll start to get some activity that Bing recognizes. This is basically traffic that Bing is seeing when someone searches on Bing. How many clicks, how many searches on Bing and clicks from Bing and all of that. We're going to do the same thing for Google in a moment because Google is the one with the 60% market share and Bing is 20%. You're still going to see a lot of traffic, but even more traffic from Google. So it is useful to set this up as soon as possible when our site is live to start to track traffic. Uh, next week I'll show you what it looks like after it's set up, but let's move on now and we're going to set up something like this also for Google. Question. Mm -hmm. Yes, we, we won't be able to do that until your site has been verified, and I'll specify it definitely next time, but if you want to explore on the menu on the left, I believe it's under the section of Configure My Site, okay. and then you'll see Linked Sites. So we'll talk about that in detail next time. Um, I want to do something like this now. If I got it to work with Bing, I want to do it also for Google. You might have already got it done for Google, that's why we did Bing first. But with Google, there's actually two ways to do it, and we should do both. There's Google Search Console, and there's Google Analytics. Of the two, we're going to spend the most time on Google Analytics. Now, Google has Search Console and Analytics separate. It's two separate logins. Whereas Bing, because it came out later, it consolidated all into one login, bing.com slash toolbox, which is what I've got in my handout here. In the section of in my handout of Google, there's a link to go to Search Console, which also known as Webmaster Tools, and a link to go to Analytics. Google.com slash webmasters, Google.com slash analytics. So it's two separate logins for two pieces of data, and it is highly recommended we set up both. We'll get more information from both. And I would used to tell people, well, eventually, probably, hopefully, Google is going to put them all together into one screen to see it all. And no, they're actually going to keep it separate. And you're just going to need to remember to check both of these login screens for your information but usually you'll be spending more time on Google Analytics. What I mean by that is perhaps have a goal here. Let me make a note. Um, goals for your analytics accounts. Check them at least once per month. Log in once a month, at the start of the month, at the end of the month, log into all three of these. Bing, Google Analytics, Google Webmaster. You're going to log into them once a month. Check them once a month. What are we checking them for? Again, once we come back next week and we look at it and we'll be able to see more in detail, hopefully some data, and I'll explain what we're looking at, what to do with it, and so forth. But basically, check them once a week. Uh, work with your positive uh, traffic and uh, disavow your negative traffic because we're going to see we're getting traffic from legitimate sources and we're getting traffic from illegitimate uh, sources. So what do we do with the good traffic and what do we do with the bad traffic? We'll do that we'll do that together. I'll have another handout and such. But if you want to research, it's called Disavow Links. We'll do it together. 
but disavow links is the key word. This other one about work with compilative links, that does need a lecture and explanation. But if you want to research a little bit about disavow links, that would be good. If not, we'll do it together next time. But here's what you want to do. Some goals. Do this once a month. Log in, check your good links, check your bad, li bad links. And then, of course, form strategies. That, of course, is very nebulous. But based on the vi different things we've talked about, forming strategies, and more things that we'll talk about, we will see. I got a lot of traffic from Facebook. I was very active on Facebook and Twitter, and I got a lot of traffic from Facebook. The strategy could be, okay, I need to try harder on Twitter, or cut Twitter loose and focus on Facebook. So strategize. We're going to get data. Knowledge is power. You're going to get a, no a lot of knowledge out of these webmaster tools. Let's set this up for Google. On, on your web browser, let's go back to, or, or let's go to the address google.com slash webmasters. Let's go to google.com slash webmasters. We're going to do something similar to what we did with Bing, in that we have to add our site, we have to verify our site. But here under Google Webmasters, it's going to say you want people to, you want to be found on the web, we want to help. The Search Console, this will be basically how do I appear on, on Google Search? Is Google finding any problems with my site? traffic and such. There's an intro video you can look at at some point. But anyway, for us, at the top right corner, we have sign in. Go ahead and click sign in. And here, if you've already got a Google account, a Gmail, you can easily sign in. Or if you don't, you can create one. So we'll, we'll do the same again. Take a moment to either sign in or sign up to Google. You can use a personal account, a business account, it doesn't matter. You should see a sign in button at the top right corner. Press the wall to sign in or sign up. So we, all we want to do is sign in for the moment, and then eventually we will add a site and see what that looks like. We will just wait a moment. You're in the right place. If you see a video with a little website holding a wrench, you're in the right place there. And we'll, uh, we'll see what that's about in just a moment. So take a moment to sign in or sign up. If you've got a Gmail account, you'll be able to sign in a lot faster. If you don't, just take a moment to create the account.
All right, so is anyone having any uh, trouble signing in? Okay, so what you might see is something like this, especially if you are new. It's going to have an intro video and a little bit of info and links and such. So basically here, welcome to Search Console, get the data, tools, and diagnostics needed to create and maintain Google-friendly websites and mobile apps. Okay, so here we can track the data of a website or an Android app. So if you've got an Android app, you can also track that, downloads and traffic and such on your app. We've got websites most likely, so we're going to need to do the same thing here. We've got add property, basically add website. Before we add a website, we have to we have to I have to mention something here. Google care Google Search Console cares about the way you add your website in a way that Bing didn't, and in a way that Google Analytics doesn't. So let me make a note note here. When adding a site to Google Search Console, it cares if you add www.victor.com and victor.com. Technically those are different. And you should add both of those because you could get traffic from both of those sources. And Bing is, I mean, and Google is going to look at both of those sources. Bing is not going to. Bing is not going to care and neither will Google Analytics. But with Search Console you could get different pieces of data when people click on that one or this one. So we're going to do one or the other first and then we'll go back and do the other one. Question? I was about to say that. So um, it cares about WW and it cares about the beginning part. HTTP, victor.com, and HTTPS, victor.com. The, the S part is security. If you go to your bank well, I have it right here, actually, google.com. It's HTTPS. There's security. When there's that lock there, that means there's security. You should add all versions of your site, definitely the WW and non-WW, but with the HTTPS, you will not be able to add HTTPS unless you have purchased security. So that is not free SSL. Security. Secure sockets layer. Security. You have to buy an SSL certificate. You buy it at Bluehost, GoDaddy, HostMonster, whatever. All of these places where you buy the domain name and such will also sell you security certificate or elsewhere. But you're not going to automatically have HTTPS unless you know you pay for it. Actually, a lot of the providers nowadays, in order for you to buy with them, are going to give you one for free for one year. And then after that, you most likely have to pay between $70 and $90 a year. So that's how you get that lock on your website. And not everyone needs that. I need it if perhaps I'm selling products, if I have user accounts and such. Yes? If I already purchased the you automatically get HTTP. Even if I didn't buy the service. If you bought the domain name, you get the HTTP. But this is your, the SSL, I think, is what you're No, but you said HTTP. Or HTTP, SSL. No, HTTP is normal connection. HTTPS is the secure connection, and that's the one you pay for. P.S. Yeah. That's the secure connection, and that's the one that you have to pay for. But you automatically get plain old HTTP when you buy the domain name. So do you have to um, add two sites? Like, you have to like, authenticate everything? You have to authenticate it uh, four times if you have all four versions. Because here, under HTTP, I would still have to do HTTP www and HTTPS www and then later I'll also submit um, like that and like that, right? It's because your authentication codes for the HTML pages is uploaded to the site 
That you don't need to do. You don't have to upload four versions of this authenticator. They all go to the same place, but we need to tell it these are the four traffic sources we want to track. So then on the other side of the console, we're going to see what happened with individually. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're going to have it's going to show us a list, and it's going to show us the WW version and the non W, and each one is going to have traffic. And then if we have security, we're going to have to look at the secure WW and non secure and, and secure non WW. So four pieces to look at. It is annoying. I wish they would all consolidate it like Bing, but they haven't and they probably won't. So for us to start off with, most likely, here's what we'll do HTTP, the name of your site.com. I'm going to do the non WW version first. We'll set this up and then we can come back and add the WW version. You need those two. You probably do not have security, so don't try to do the secure one because you don't you didn't pay for security. It's an extra step that you need to pay for. So I'm typing in the non-WW version of my site, HTTP plain old connection, add property. And you're gonna get something very similar to Bing. The screen will look a little different, and it may give you a recommendation of We've detected you're using GoDaddy. Follow these steps. Don't even bother with that. That's like step three on Bing. This is editing, you know, your C name, record, and all of that weird stuff. If it's, if it's trying to tell you to do this via your GoDaddy or Bluehost or whatever, don't do that way. If it's recommending that, don't do it. We have alternate methods. On mine, it's recommending download this file, just like I did with Bing upload it to my server and click verify here just like Bing if when I helped you you did the method where you copied and pasted code that might be under the alternate method if I go to alternate method there it is HTML tag HTML code so if you verify Bing via HTML code we can do it via Google as well so it might be under alternate this also has the ability to do domain name provider, which is like option three. Don't even bother with that. And then we've got these other two, which may or may not work, depending. If you've already got Google Analytics set up, you can select that for it to vouch for you here, basically, in Google Search Console. I'm going to assume we're taking this class because we don't have Google Analytics set up, so I will not try that. But if you do have Google Analytics already, you may try it and it may verify you, it may not. Worst case scenario, you just do HTML tag like we did for Bing. And then Google Tag Manager, if you've got Google Tag Manager account already, then you can use that to verify this other account. If you don't know what that is, then you probably don't have it, so don't do that one. Let's take a moment then, if you need some help, call me over, try to do one of these methods. If it works, you know, when you click verify, it'll, it'll work, and then it'll take you back to the search console, and it'll have your site without any data yet, where then you can add the WW version. Let's take a moment to do that. Anyone need any help at this point? If you have Google Analytics, do you have to have a different code for each site? Each, each site, like the WW and the non WW? Oh, two different names uh, you, you will need it will need different analytics code for each of the sites who wants to keep them separate into different codes oh, so it's different for WWW? no not that the, the question was if it's different dot coms different dot coms different dot nets so if it's different websites that is different codes but the WW versions it's it's the same code if you're going to upload a file, you're going to need to use some files upload software like um, FileZilla. That's a very popular one. Or you might want to do it through your provider's uploading screen, like the file manager. Yes. On Yoast, it's also going to be on that same screen for Bing, and the and it's gonna I think they call it Google Webmaster. 
if it says Google Webmaster, it's synonymous with Search Console. They just haven't changed the name yet. It's going to be channel tagging. Because that, that's the line of code that is for um, that's the line of code that can be more mm -hmm. So now what happens if I've already added this one? And I want to go to the same website. It's the same website. I'm um, the first time I had it didn't have the WWE and now I'm going to use the WWE and it, it's not speaking to the application. Because it's a supplement. There is one. I completely recommend it because they can be really similar and have a lot of power to explain each other. It's called the Zero 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 Web Host.
All right, everyone. So if you got this to work, then what is happening is then eventually it'll take you back to the main screen. Again, mine's a test account, so I won't see anything meaningful. But eventually it'll go back and there'll be some data we can look at. You can set up multiple accounts. And I set up the non-WW version. I would go back here and do add property for the WW version. We can do that later. But you saw the process. So let's assume we did it. We've got our site. When we come back next week, we will see the data, some data, hopefully. If you don't have any data, I'll show a site with data. And we'll further look at, okay, what's the point of all of this? Again, today's the day where we spend time setting it up, and next time we'll see the data. We have one more thing to set up, and then we'll, we'll wrap up. Uh, I know we missed our other break, but uh, we're going to set this one up, and then we'll wrap up. The third item from the handout is the Google Analytics. Let me get a show of hands here one more time. How, how many of you have used Google Analytics before? Uh, a lot of people. Okay, so this might go relatively fast. We're going to set up Google Analytics now. So I'm still logged into Google here, Search Console. So at the top, uh, go to the address google.com slash analytics, which is the link right there on the handout. Google.com slash A N A L Y T I C S, Google Analytics. Google Analytics has been around a long time, probably 10 years or so at most, I mean, at least. And uh, there's new versions of it actually now. There's for enterprise, small business, and mobile apps. So this is further to confuse it. But this is usually where you're going to spend most of the time compared to Search Console and Analytics. At the top right corner, there's a sign in button. Click sign in. And then here you have to select. They've recently add, changed this within the last three or six months because we've got classic Google Analytics which is free. And then we've got Google Analytics Premium, which is not free. I haven't educated myself to see what that is and what's better about it, but I have to say probably it's better because it's paid and, you know, they're going to give you better get what you pay for. So I need to spend some time to read about it. And these other ones also, same sort of thing. There's only so many hours in the day. So we're going to focus on Google Analytics. Click on Google Analytics there. If this is the first time you use it, it'll show you a screen with three icons. It won't show it on mine because I've already set mine up. But if this is the first time you use it, oh, it is actually. Good. So if this is the first time you use it, it's going to show you three icons right here. Sign up, verify it, learn about your audience. You want to click sign up. Well, this is misnamed. It's saying sign up, like create a brand new thing, but it's basically reusing your existing Gmail. This will give us a this will give us a specific code that is different to add to the site, but it's the same login information. So go go ahead and click sign up, and then I'm going to show what that looks like. It'll look a little bit different <clears throat> because mine's already been set up, but let me, let me try to show it. If this is a brand new account, most likely it'll show you a screen like this, where it says fill in this information about your new account. If it doesn't display that, you've already, you've already gotten an account. So 
it's just confirmed with everyone. If you see the button that says sign up, go ahead and click sign up. If you don't see the button that says sign up, uh, we're going to fill in this account information, which I'll show in a moment. me here to fill in some information on a new account. And this is a little confusing. Actually, Google Analytics is very confusing. And we'll look into it in detail, of course. But what I want to say is, just look at this for one moment. There's going to be a screen that looks like this eventually. In my case, because I work with a lot of clients, this is how mine looks, that I've got all of these folders where I have all of these different clients and then all of their data is within the folder. Google Analytics calls these folders accounts. So that's why it sounds like, I thought I already had an account and it's asking me to create a new account. It's actually asking you to create a folder to organize your data. For me it makes sense because I have various accounts that my company works for. For yourself, you're going to probably have one account. Let's say my company is vmcinc.net. So I'm going to have one account, but what I could do is track the data of multiple things. I could track the data of um, the YouTube channel or the main website or the shopping cart or whatever. I can track data in different ways um, in one folder. So the folder is an account and these over here are properties. I'm tracking the YouTube, I'm tracking the main site, I'm tracking the other YouTube. So that's what that screen is asking us. Create an account which is a folder and we'll add properties which are websites. So your screen should look something like that. It's saying, okay, create an account. It's the topmost level of organization, the folder. And then we'll add the property which would be the website. In your case, most likely, you're going to put in the name of your website as the top level folder. And then I'm going to say, this is good. I'm going to set this up to, to track the main website data. So I could call this main website. Later, I could set this up to also track the YouTube and the specific shopping cart page and my eBay and, and so forth. And I can create different properties attached to this account. Are you going to show that as the um, next week? Um, I just I don't know how to link the YouTube a YouTube account to another because well. Well, most likely I can show you directly because not everyone has a YouTube and and so oh. forth. So we can we can look at that. But here, then it's asking for the address of of the website in here, I can select HTTP or HTTPS. And it does not matter if you put WW or not, even though it shows WW here. So here I would put in my, my website address, the same one that I did for Google Analytics and, Google, and Bing Webmaster Tools. Category. So much data is going to be collected that it might be cumbersome to look at the data. So if you select one of these categories, <clears throat> Google Analytics will show you easier data related to your industry. So if I select books and literature, the, the screens that it might show me are more focused on that industry, that category. Therefore, I recommend for the industry to be the very last one, other. That way it'll show you the full breadth of possible screens and settings and, and, and data. The other ways you will be able to see your data, but it'll be in different places. And oftentimes when you go look up tutorials and such, and it'll say, go to this screen, and you don't have that screen because they put it someplace else to hide it from you because you're under science and you don't need that screen usually. 
So I'm saying put it under other to be able to see everything, which will be overwhelming, but we'll, we'll break it down next time. Time zone, make sure that's set correctly. And then there's all of these optional sharing settings. If you turn them all off, it'll still work. There will, be, there will not be any detrimental result here, but this is basically saying, would you like to share the data collected here with these other services, such as benchmarking? Contribute anonymous data to aggregate data sets to enable more benchmarking. That is, if I allow that, all of the data that Google collects about my site will become anonymized and shared to other Google Analytics users to compare my site with their site. It'll be anonymous. But any of these, it's up to you to change what you want. It's telling you recommended, do whatever you want. And in my case, usually I'm turning them all off. There's no detriment to having them off and whatever you'd like there if you want to change that. So for example, I need to talk to someone in tech support. If I turn that off, they will not be able to see my data. It could be turned on at the moment you need it. So if you turn them all off, you can turn them on as necessary, or leave them on and it'll still work. And at the bottom, click Get Tracking ID. This one has a huge contract to read about how you will and will not use the service. So after you read that, click Accept. Right. Well, what I was saying is that the account name is like the folder, the folder where you're going to save several website names, several property names. So I called my, if I back up here, I called my account Victor's Bakery, and in it I'm tracking my main website or my YouTube or my eBay. So that's the big difference. And you write main website? I wrote main website, yeah. You can call that whatever you'd like. You can call it my traffic or, or, or type the name of the address of the website. Anything that helps you at a glance see what that's supposed to be. It's main website traffic. At this point, then, it'll be about the verification. Just like we did verification for Google and Bing, we need to sort of verify this. But this is going to be different in that there's only one way to do it. There isn't upload a file, there isn't that sort of way you have to do this code. This is JavaScript code. And the ways that I've shown people on WordPress, it's not going to be the same. We'll have to do some one-on-one. -on -one. But here it says to get all the benefits, copy and paste this code to every page you want to track. So that would be my home page, my about page, contact page, etc. But if you're working with something like WordPress or Wix and such, it often works with a template. So if I add my code to the template, it'll add it to every page. I'm going to do some break in a moment to, to help people. But what you need to do here is take a moment to copy and paste this into your site. Um, and there's no button here to verify. You have to add it, and within about 48 hours, it will check and then start to gather the data. And when we come back next week, it will hopefully give us some data to, to work with. Before we break for, for help and such, let me show you this, because you're going to lose this screen. If you can't do it right now and you want to do it at home, you're going to lose this screen. Here's how to get back to it. If you're here, wherever, wherever you're at here, click on, on, the, on this Home button. We have Home, Reporting, Customization, Admin. We'll talk about that in detail later. But the first time you log into, I mean, every time you log into Google Analytics, you will be on the home screen. You will see a list of your accounts and your website properties inside of them. To get back to that code, it's under admin. And under admin, there's lots of admin settings to set. Main account level, property level, view level. Within the property level of admin, we're going to see tracking info, JavaScript tracking info, JS tracking info. If I open that section, here's the tracking code. If I need to get back to that code, that's where it is, under Admin, Properties, Tracking Info, Tracking Code. 
the screen changes to show me there's your code. Add that code to your website. We're gonna stop, we're gonna stop the main lecture at this point. Wrap up for the day with a little lab time. If you try to set this up, go ahead. If you need some help, call me over. But any general questions at the moment? Okay. So that's it for the moment. Uh, we'll do some help. Remember to sign in. If you are new today, you need to enroll. And if I called your name, please see me because you might not be properly enrolled. We've got Thomas and we've got Sylvia, I believe. So that's it for the moment. We'll do some lab time and we'll do it again next time.